In the deep blue sea, a basic understanding of aquatic realities can mean everything. If it gets out, they won't let me scuba. If I can't scuba, then what's this all been about? What am I working toward? Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down the five most interesting facts that we could learn about scuba diving. Some of you may already know that scuba means self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, and a few of you may even be part of the dive world's equivalent of the Mile High Club, the 20 Meter Club. But for those of you unfamiliar with the ways of the scuba, well, it's about to go down. Number five, wetsuits keep divers warm thanks to nitrogen gas bubbles. After working on the Manhattan Project, an American physicist named Hugh Bradner invented the wetsuit in 1952, nine years after Jacques Cousteau and Emile Gagnon introduced the Aqualung. And while experienced divers fully understand the specifics of the neoprene design, not everyone realizes how a wetsuit works. Some think it's the enclosed water that actually warms the body, and sure, that helps, but it's the bubbles of nitrogen gas within the neoprene suit that keep the body warm. Nitrogen is a very poor conductor of heat, which prevents the cold seawater from drawing out all of your body heat. As long as the suit fits tightly, the enclosed water won't flush out, thus allowing the gas to keep the body warm. Number four, altitude diving happens at 1,000 feet above sea level. Okay, so any dive below sea level may be enough for some of you, but others need something more. And for some, that something is altitude diving, which takes place at 300 meters or 1,000 feet above sea level. Before executing the dive, you'll need the proper knowledge and the proper legal documents too. And that's because of the potential decompression sickness from the reduced atmospheric pressure. This is a danger at sea level as well, but high altitudes make it even more complicated. In fact, the US Navy recommends a 12 hour wait before making the dive, and a system known as cross corrections helps divers make the necessary calculations. So what's the most ambitious altitude dive? Well, that took place at Chile's Lago Licancaber in 1982 measured at approximately 19,000 feet above sea level. Number three, decompression sickness is not just for scuba divers. Divers learned very early on that they must control the rate of their ascent or face very serious consequences. Decompression sickness, a horrible debilitating illness caused by the formation of nitrogen in your tissues and bloodstream. Commonly referred to as DCS or simply the bends, the condition is also known as caisson disease and the term inadvertently arose through American industrialism. In the 19th century, when feats of engineering had to be performed underwater, workers toiled away in the compressed atmospheres of caissons. Unfortunately, before 1841, nobody knew decompression sickness was a thing. And in 1873, the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge led to a sobering reminder of what people endured in the name of engineering, with a recorded 110 cases of decompression sickness. Number two. Deep diving gets you turnt. I'm gonna ask the DJ to play Kokomo and get this place turnt up. So we all know what a drunk person sounds like, right? Well, in scuba diving, somebody experiencing the raptures of the deep will act in the same bizarre manner. Do you know what I think this calls for, gentlemen? A hit of oxygen. Yay! No human is immune to the conscious effects of nitrogen narcosis, which sets in at 100 feet underwater as oxygen itself becomes toxic. At such depths, trained scuba divers use a breathing gas called Tremix, which combines nitrogen, helium, and oxygen. This is what helped a British diver, the late John Bennett, become the first scuba diver to ever dive 1,000 feet deep in 2001. Granted, at that depth, getting tipsy on some N is not as big of a problem as hypothermia. Number one, colors disappear underwater. Reality takes on a different form underwater. Because water absorbs different wavelengths of light to different degrees, as you go deeper underwater, colors effectively disappear from the visible spectrum one by one. At roughly 15 feet, cutting yourself would mean bleeding blue blood. You want bleeding? Oh. Ow, ow. At about 25 feet, your tangerine will look more like an oversized blueberry. At around 150 feet, you'll have no idea which M&Ms to eat first and which to eat last, because they'll all look the same. I only eat the, the brown ones. You'll scream in frustration, which will confuse the rest of your diving party because sound travels nearly four and a half times faster underwater, making it difficult to determine the source of a sound. Basically, the world under the sea is much different than life above. Under the sea, under the sea. So, what facts about scuba diving surprises you the most? And where are my 20 meter club members at? For more crunk top 10s and leaky wetsuit top 5s, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Well,